now McMeekin is really starting to take control of the face-off guy. Mentioned he's a physical specimen, 6'1", 210, one of the strongest guys in the Ivy League. I'll see a lot of 6'1", 210, two-handed face-off guys. He's pick your poison. They're daring McMeekin to shoot that, and he makes him pay. McMeekin really exploded on the scene at the end of last year. It was all Ivy League tournament. And those two games at Princeton won to take home the tournament crown. Penn's actually closed a little bit of a gap as I say that too quickly with McMeekin, but they've they found a way to solve him. Looks like the rain is slowed to a little sprinkle to this point, so that's good. McMeekin continues though to pour it on at the face of mind in short stick. Good point. He does play more offense. I will say that Miles Botkis has played some box and cross, so he should know how to defend himself. Off the face-off, there's another goal for the Tigers. Quick trigger, and we are tied. Andrew McMeekin, get it and go. He can do that. It's his third of the year. The Episcopal Academy product just stays with that right hand. Looks like he throws kind of a twister there. Means he shoots right-handed, but off of his left shoulder on the release. That's just a great job of being efficient. You want to make sure face-off players. Randall with the assist. He heard you, Q. He knew he had to get back into the game, and he's in it. And so is Yale. But they cannot solve their issues at the face-off dot. And you talk about no quit. Look at Machado run off the field. I mean, you feel like he needs And barbecue burns. McMeekin had two goals against Panero this season. I got him for seven goals coming into this game. He's aggressive, but makes good decisions. And they're putting Stews in at the face. McMeekin gets the better of him, though, again. But if gets an assist quickly, he'll load the stat sheet. 24 straight games for the junior out of Devon, Pennsylvania. Colin McGill and the Tigers answer up the other end. Fourth straight by the face-off man. That's Andrew McMeekin. I feel like we're talking about McMeekin a lot, but it gives you a lot of reason to do so. Right when Dartmouth gets on the board and in highlight fashion, McMeekin answers right back. Looks at the sideline like, what else can I do today? He is having himself a game. In the rain, a goal scored, so. <laughs> Before we go here in Chapel Hill, almost. I hope there's a couple of people at home that appreciate the reference. Uh, Green, you let the guy in the crease pop out behind you to set up for a shootout. This is what they missed last week. At the dot, winning draws, Andrew McMeekin popping out in front of him, having the awareness to pass to Coulter Mackesies. Instead of cross passing across his body, he continues. Who's an excellent long stick midfielder. The cover is a tough task. McMeekin shoots, scores! That is a backbreaker, and the Princeton bench knows it. He's known as a goal scorer, Quinn. He had seven coming into tonight. Pinch and pop. Disrespect. Turn and rake. How about that placement? Here's the issue, guys. You have McMeekin who can let it fly and can pop it from 10 to 12. If you slide to him, you're leaving Mackesy and Kabiri and Barbecue Burns. McMeekin. Madelon is saying, you know, he's got a lot of respect for the Bears. They recruit a lot of the same guys, obviously, in the Ivy League. And that the record of the Bears is not the true story this season. They can attack you in a lot of different ways. And he was expecting a dogfight here today. No bones about it. He said this is a 
Andrew McMeekin didn't score his first 10 games. He comes into tonight having scored in four consecutive contests. Also above 50% of the faceoff X on the season, 63% in Ivy League play. Really adding another dimension. He's a physical specimen, 6'1", 210, one of the strongest guys in the Ivy League. You look at what he did against Harvard two weeks ago in a victory where the Tigers held up again as he's done time and time again. The 5'9 sophomore plays much bigger. The big goal for the Bears. Still plenty of time, though, for the Tigers. Ten and a half to go, and they win the faceoff. Right off the faceoff, McMeekin. Quick ball movement here. The shot and a score for wow. the Tigers. They don't need much time at all. Burns for the second time today. That was fast. I mean, they win the faceoff. They get it up. Burns puts it home. Bing, bang, boom. Tigers get it right back. Second six, of the day for him. Six seconds in between goals there. One from Scandone at 430. And then at 436, Burns the answer for the Tigers. 12-10. Bears lead trim. Ball comes loose and McMeekin able to gobble that one up. McAsee, he might as well be automatic one out of 100 in that low kind of mid lefty wing spot great job by, by right Z prepped at Trinity Pauling he's got his fifth of the season and it's a 2-2 contest here's McMeekin on the run make it five in a row for the Tigers face off man Princeton gets it right back in the rain Not a lot of Fogos can shoot like that. I, I think if you're Coach Madeline, you're pretty happy with that response. <laughs> I mean, I'll let the shot speak for itself. <laughs> Don't see a lot of 6-1-2-10 two-handed face-off guys. No, and he's been impressive down the stretch. I mean, it's a battle against Lehigh. Every single time you play them, you know it's going to be a dogfight until the end. McMeekin wins the faceoff, trying to hang on to it ahead of the trail check from behind. By and six of those eight games, not just multi, but four or more points. And Walsh grabs his first goal there. Tigers looking to answer. Oh, there it is. Andrew McMeekin, Fogo, 4-3. And that is something Princeton has not had in recent years. Andrew McMeekin, he can win the faceoff by himself, scoop the ground ball, and get the goal. That's one way to pack up the stat sheet in a matter of seconds. What a 104 wins quickly off the faceoff. There it is again. The Tigers and McMeekin up by four in the second. Unbelievable. Pushes it forward, and there was no doubt. I don't even think he looked to the left and right. He had one thing in mind, and that's a high-to-high -high shot, beating one of the best goalkeepers in the country, and that's exactly what Andrew McMeekin executed there. What a job thus far. Two tallies and a ton of ground balls for number 32. Another extra man goal for Penn. Both teams have now scored one goal in the second half. We've played less than four minutes. So, so much to be decided. That was tapped what in by McMeekin. Wow. <laughs> Left his feet, used the cross legally as his body was probably the year for Dunn. Second of the year for the Big Red, unassisted 12 27. You saw John Fricaro's numbers at the top of the show. I mean, fifth in the country in save percentage, 15th in goals against average. Top 10 saves per game. He sees a lot of rubber. And he's not off to a great start. Palumbo second of the day. Beats Matt Tully, who got the starting goal today. 55 for Cornell. Still in there to start the second half. Two quick ones from Princeton. McMeekin wins it to himself and beats Tully. He had one last week. If you give him time and room, 32 just cuts right through the defense. They don't pick him up because they're worried about Mackesy at the point or from that lefty wing. 
if you come off of him, you're leaving the best shooter from that spot, maybe in college lacrosse. Colombo continues his day, and now McMeekin is really starting to take control of the faceoff die. Wins another one. One goal differential, two went to overtime. I would be shocked if this one doesn't end up being really tight at the end of the fourth. McMeekin picks up the faceoff, looking to enter and get the offense going. It looks like the Tigers. 4.16 to go, three goal game. Second time we've been at three in this fourth quarter. Shoveled ahead, the fight is on, look out. Good no call there, I think Penn followed the freshman out of Denver, Colorado. Went to school in Maryland though. Hot bed of lacrosse, obviously. And White wins the ground ball. And no Tigers win the faceoff, quick moving. Fourth quarter just getting underway between Penn and UNC. Princeton cashing in on a goal. McAsee able to get one. Sneak it past Jamison. Avoids that goal. Yeah, even still does not put a damper on what Wade's accomplished. And now clean win for Andrew McMeekin who feeds and it's tapped in. Kabiri took the shot. His old teammate Colin Burns was there screening. I don't know who had the last touch on it, but I do know that found Peter. I think he might have went off Kabiri, not off his stick, off his body. Hard to see here, but in any case, it went in the back of the cage. See the replay here. There's a shot. Oh, clean shot in. Tigers. Coulter McAsee at 4.56. Can't pick up his release. It doesn't hurt that Tucker Wade's a very talented guy. High school All-American, first team in the state of Maryland, and now it's really going for the Tigers as Andrew McMeekin wins the faceoff, scores the goal, and it's all Princeton in the first half. Yeah, look for a timeout here by Rutgers. You got to stem the tide here. Clean face off, comes right down the middle, takes the shot for goal. Goes up by five. Halfway through the second quarter here. Andrew, our face off specialist, picked a pretty good time to score his first career goal. Now, one more look at it. This was a no doubter. And put it in a good spot, too. Inside the left shoe. Coulter McAsee at 4.56. Andrew McMeekin with another faceoff win. He's now 10 of 12. McMeekin, the big 6'1", 210-pound sophomore, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, out of Episcopal Academy. Last year as a freshman, just a shade under 50%, really took over that faceoff spot. Mid-April, Tyler Sandoval, remember, went down with the season-ending knee injury against Yale in late March, and they turned the season at Manhattan first as the interim in 40 seconds, taking a 3-2 deficit and turns it into a 6-3 advantage. And a lot of it started with that man, number 32. If we can start playing, maybe. Face-offs are also 2-2 so far. McMeekin's got this one himself. McMeekin, just a sophomore, Right around 50% in the games against Yale last year. Big goal of the season. Came into the day fourth in the Ivy League in goals. Second in the nation in freshman goal scoring behind Virginia's McCabe Millen. Three straight face-off wins for McMeekin, although he takes a tumble. That's one way to add to your ground ball total. Win the face-off yourself and get another <laughs> one. A great job by McMeekin. It's, it's just such a luxury to be able to get possession after possession. Quarter, face off's a big story. 5-2 and now 6-2 McMeekin against Anunziata. Three games of the season, Duffy only three goals to his name tonight in the first quarter, already two. And the Tar Heels continue to dominate at the face off X. I give that one away though. That's gotta kill Joe Bresci. You've built all this momentum. Opened up within the last 10 minutes and now they're clearing out a little bit. We've got a rainbow on the horizon. The sun coming in a little bit from the uh, west. It's really an odd weather night here. That's a big win 